At Ford, we pride ourselves on building strong, capable vehicles. But we're only as strong as the people who drive them. People like you, who don't just see an F-150, but see what they can build with it. Because built Ford proud, it's a pact between us, our drivers, and what we can do together. Built Ford proud. Some models, trims, and features may not be available or may be subject to change. Shopping for humans is hard this holiday season. Shopping for your dog is easy thanks to Bark. Every month we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. Whether it's fun plush or tough toys for heavy chewers, we spoil all the dogs. Subscribe now and get a free upgrade at BarkBox.com slash iHeart. Hi, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're pulling back the curtain to reveal women overlooked in their own lifetimes or in our historical accounts of the eras in which they lived. We're talking about the activists, thinkers, leaders, artists, and innovators history has forgotten. Today, we're talking about the Queen of England who never was. She was 400 years ahead of her time and her country. Let's talk about Empress Matilda. Matilda was born in England at the beginning of the 12th century. She was the daughter of King Henry I of England and Matilda of Scotland. Some might say her father got her into politics from a young age. He arranged both of her marriages to foreign monarchs with the hope of strengthening England's political position against adversaries. Matilda's first marriage was to Emperor Henry V of Germany, From him, she adopted the title she would use for the rest of her life, Empress Matilda. Just over 10 years into their marriage, Henry V died. Matilda was now a widow and still childless. She went back to England, and within three years, she was married again. This time to the Count of Anjou, Geoffrey Plantagenet. The couple had three children. Matilda was her father's only living legitimate child. Her brother, William, had died in a tragic ship accident in 1120. As a result, Matilda was named as his successor and the first female heir to the English throne. Potentially knowing that this decision would be met with resistance, the king made his court swear an oath to serve and support his daughter. When the king died in 1135, Matilda's time had arrived. England was set to have its first queen. But before Matilda could be crowned, her cousin, Stephen of Blois, rushed to England to contest the nomination. Despite their promise to the late king, many English nobles and the church were not ready to accept a woman ruler. So when Stephen showed up, they readily supported his campaign for the throne. And he was crowned king of England. But Matilda wasn't going down without a fight. With the support of her half-brother and her uncle, Matilda went to Oxford to regroup. Four years later, she invaded and set off an almost two-decade-long civil war. This period of attacks, bloodshed, captures, and escapes was known as the Anarchy. Matilda and Stephen went up and down the country fighting for the royal throne. In 1141, Matilda came the closest she would to being crowned queen. During one battle, Stephen was captured and deposed. With him out of the way, Matilda could finally claim what was rightfully hers. She was elected Lady of the English, and preparations for her coronation began. Part of the coronation process involved a tradition of the incoming monarch granting favors like tax breaks to the public. But Matilda ignored that tradition. The already skeptical public soured on her and chased her out of London. Matilda again fled to Oxford. Having failed to ascend to the throne, Matilda released Stephen from prison in exchange for her half-brother. Stephen gathered his army and created a blockade around Oxford. His goal was to capture Matilda by starving her in her own city. Three months went by before Matilda came up with an escape plan. It was a cold December night. Heavy winds were blowing and snow blanketed the ground. As the story goes, Matilda used robes tied together to lower herself down from the castle. She then moved quietly through the night, camouflaged in a white cloak. She allegedly walked through six miles of snow before reaching safety. 
With neither Stephen nor Matilda able to fully capture and depose the other, the war continued. By the mid-1140s, the cousins had reached an impasse. Matilda reigned over most of the Southwest, while Stephen had control of the Southeast. After Matilda's half-brother passed away, she returned to Normandy, where her husband ruled. She spent the next few years campaigning for her son, Henry II, to be the heir to the English throne. If Matilda could never officially be crowned Queen of England, she was going to make sure her son inherited what he deserved. In 1153, Matilda and Stephen reached an agreement known as the Treaty of Wallingford. It ensured that upon Stephen's death, Matilda's son, Henry, would become the King of England. The Treaty of Wallingford marked the end of the Civil War. A year later, in October of 1154, Stephen died, and Matilda's son became King Henry II of England. In 1167, Empress Matilda died. Although she never became Queen of England, she challenged the patriarchal and sexist forces of the 12th century. She created an opening for Mary Tudor to become the first Queen of England in 1553. All month, we're talking about women behind the curtain. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F-A-C-E-T dot com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC-registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. Now is the time to experience America's pastime in a whole new way. Major League Baseball has teamed up with T-Mobile for Business to advance the game with next-gen 5G solutions. Going deeper with real-time data visualization, new camera angles that put fans on the field with their favorite players, and even testing an automated ball strike system in the minor leagues. This is the 5G era of baseball. See what we can do for your business at tmobile.com slash now. Major League Baseball trademarks use with permission. Officially licensed product of MLB Players Incorporated. With millions of books on Amazon, there's a reading feeling for everyone. For example, Juan's. <sighs> As he drifts away to Nirvana after only the first chapter. Is different to Maya's. <gasps> when she discovered the narrator was, in fact, the evil twin. Which is also different to Noah's. Aww. Anytime the cute cyberpunk is mentioned, even though in reality he'd be totally out of his league. From uh, two uh, to uh, Amazon Books, that reading feeling awaits.